Dr. Akemi Takayama at Shanando Conservatory. You've just heard Road Caprice 11, that's for All State Virginia um, audition that's coming up in one week, I understand. So here are some pointers. This piece is, as I said, it's an allegro brillante. You like to go for as brilliant character as possible. So first, have a good imagination about how you want to present this piece. And then I recommend you to make sure your intonation is good. So this is it's a B major. Lots of sharps, so that's rare. So you want to be able to play those. So what I just did was that fourth, uh, intervals fourth or third, fifth, sixth, those are the ones that makes the audience um, uncomfortable if they are not in tune with each other. So you want to make sure that your choice of intonation makes sense when you play with each other. So that makes very nice harmony. Um, to make a brilliant sound, I recommend you use um, kind of clear sound at the beginning so that it doesn't come off like this. In order to do that, the bow pressure, the, the, do you see that uh, my bow hair is uh, being pushed by a um, bow stick a little bit? To be able to calibrate which part of the bow and and what with what string, with what character, do the just the right amount is a critical uh, point. So do you see that? And I definitely um, increase the bow speed for that sforzando. Um, so continue to think about what how, how much of the pressure you will need. So right here is probably an exception. You don't want to do, you want to start very airy to bring out the color, mystical color. So you want to phrase that to be a little flexible instead of ta 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 um, And the bow is no matter if you have string crossings or not. Um, as, uh, how do you call it? As finesse as possible? So, and string crossings and um, shift is also the ones that uh, stops, us from being, stops us from being uh, smooth. So work on that to make sure your timing is not being sacrificed. So nobody wanna know where the shifts are, where string crossings are. So uh, next, the main place it's in the middle of the page is those um, double stops uh, preceding with this. So some of you might feel like, oh, I should have been practicing thirds. Um, yes, those are very important technique and it, it just hits us sometimes unexpectedly. So. Right here, um, I, I like you to work on those harmony to be in tune as well as how to do the string crossings. Uh, if you just play D and A, like, do you see that angle is very large? So we want to do the closest possible angle. In a most not not coercible way, so you want to know what the uh, motion is for the right hand and also our uh, fingers. Uh, and so, if I'm, in my mind I'm playing at the bottom notes a little bit longer, so that I can legato into the next note instead of. So I 
recommend actually to practice with one note, two notes, one, one, two. So that you can bleed into the next note seamlessly. Um, and then this one. So uh, passage like that, we tend to keep really think about the left hand, but the key is once you're in tune, you want to make sure your bow is in the string solidly, even though you are shifting. Do you see that? Uh, the pressure of that I didn't change but the finger is going to the place. Uh, if this gets a different calibration, then um, it gets more fragile. And so we want to avoid, you know, unnecessary worries, just to keep the pressure here. Okay, so then I think the cool place is the towards to the end when the music keeps building up uh, after repetition yeah. this this bar looks uh, easy but actually more difficult than it seems because um, we do have to do an extra bow maneuver to make this smooth and bring out the correct line watch do you see that we end the note with A string and then again and then one of them will go to G string. So there are this, there's this much space between A and G string. So if you try go from where you ended and go to G string, that, that note would become very tight and, and only short bow is left. So because of that, we do this technique. Lift the bow tiny bit and still travel to the same direction it came from. Then keep going to the... That way. Keep going. A string would keep ringing because bow lifted so you use this resonance and then travel into the next string so do you see if we don't do this then the, the bow gets shorter and the note gets um, you know a little bit uh, tight because we don't let it ring at the end. So of course it needs to be in tune, but anyway. So I think that's a very tricky bar because it doesn't look like any anything. So right here. That's how the, the bottom notes ascend at the end. I think it's really cool. So make it exciting. Hope this um, is helpful. Please watch the other one too.
everyone. Uh, my name is Akemi Takayama. I'm the professor of Shenandoah Conservatory. And this time I just performed Prokofiev uh, Symphony Number no. 1 from the second movement. This piece is so delicate. It's, um, uh, there's a poise, there's a underlying tempo. Um, but, uh, it just continues throughout. Uh, so we can't really change the position, even though there may be slightly going back and forth, but it's like um, a very quiet ocean. Um, so the bowing can be many different ways. Um, and in, in my case, I just play the ones that feels comfortable to me. Uh, but some of the important thing is on the, um, the length of the notes. So when there's um, eight notes uh, and then with uh, uh, followed by slur, so there's a lift. So you want to make sure that you still vibrate the notes and then, um, but the bow is lifted after a little scratch. And after the down bow, we part the bow. And this bowing it says, uh, or, um, for me, just the same direction works, but if you are playing in an orchestra, that they will have a specific bowing for you. Uh, first challenging place is a slight uh, crescendo and a diminuendo that happens in a second to the third bar. Um, that's just like ocean going and coming in a way. So, so you want to do just enough because everybody's going to contribute to the crescendo. So you don't have to feel like you have to do a lot, but you still have to give some kind of sense to grow and going away. Diminendo is often more difficult to do because we were very good at getting louder, but getting softer is um, a skill we have to be very conscious about. So right after we finish that, so you might saw me doing this. So there's always, we don't wanna just get that note out of cold. All what you wanna do is So, so me, so that's how I get to that. But the timing is very critical. So one, two, three. You see the timing is important. Uh, this has molto dolce. So we really wanna use the tilted bow, then, the, the, make sure you're counting in a in the long notes too. So the position doesn't change either you have a long notes or a short notes. Either you play down bow or the up bow, you want to have the stroke the same. And in this case, I'm using a harmonics E. Yeah, another one. So I'll have a fingering sheet at the end of this. Um, but coming back, coming out with a fingering that, yeah. Something so, unless you have a very good shift, uh, thinking about the fingering that would most likely to hide the transition, the shifting transitions would be your benefit. Okay, so the next section, the, um, I think the tricky thing is the, those triplets. So. So 
that timing, so you don't want to be like a dupo, like, or, or you don't want to be, so you're not. Okay, so then right here is a, so you want to have an articulated left hand, however, um, when we try to think about that, the bow becomes. But you want to make sure. Da, 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 da. So you want to make sure your bow is guiding the flow. Uh, make sure you are doing that not just from the tip of the hand, but uh, you are big. Uh, muscle right here, so kind of guiding. If that you can see that, so th this is kind of helping the line. Okay, then I don't really like doing them the trail with the three and four. But in this case, uh, just uh, doing the other finger makes it even more difficult. So, that's the fingering I'm using right now. You notice, so that's the same version as the very beginning so you want to play in a similar manner uh, even though it's octave lower so what we don't want is the very strong e sound like you will want to avoid that uh, so again um as i said the tilt the bell and you want to make sure that your hand is balanced so um if you try to do the same thing like if you try to do with the low arm elbow it might have too much weight so then you try to pick up the weight with the hand and it's going to make it more difficult so make sure you have a sufficient um eagle like kind of open arm so that your weight is not hanging and then you'll try to play pianissimo You know this. Right here, uh, this again at the triplets. So uh, you want to stay soft. I choose to go to E string because right after. Uh, that there's a E coming up, so it's it's really convenient to be on a first position right there. The next thing come easily. So uh, because of that, the transition. Do you see that the sound quality changed so quick, rapidly, so drastically. So you want to make sure that it's not. Like suddenly squeezing the sound to be really um, kind of ugly E string sound. So, so try to match the timber of the sound if you know what I mean. Uh, then, the so right before that, you wanna again. This has a slight crescendo as a group. By then, so you want to be softer sound again. Isn't that really elegant that you you go, go, go just slightly and then come down and then you want to come to this poise, the pianissimo again. So, so this 
is the only place that um, a little bit tricky because you have a trill. Then that second finger is the, the, the next thing. So it's going to be really fast. And uh, going into the pizzicato, make sure you're keeping the tempo. One, two, one. So that's it for the Prokofiev.